Hello and welcome to Desert Rat Fiber Arts. I'm Desert Rat, but you can call me Lloyd. Today we are continuing our journey for this year's uh, 2023 fiber study. Um, today we are going to be doing a Welsh mountain. So I have some here. Let me see if I can get this in for you to see. So this is from Hearthside Fibers. I did pay for this out of my own pocket. So I'm not being sponsored in any way, shape, or form from them. So let's uh, uh, take a look at this and uh, we'll uh, get to spinning it here just shortly. So uh, the breed origin is, of course, from Wales. Um, it's 31 to 35 microns. The staple length is 80 to 100 millimeters. And, of course, the garbage truck's coming by. Um, Safe length 80 to 100 millimeters, which is 3 to 4 inches. So, that's what that card says. Let's see what the Field Guide to Fleece has to say about this. Um, there's a picture of the sheep there. And, um, according to this, uh, Welsh Mountain and South Wales Mountain are the breed. So, um, they are a conservation breed. Let's see, this says here, Origins Wales, fleece weight two and a half to four and a half pounds, so uh, 1.25 to two kilograms. Staple length is two to four inches or five to 10 centimeters or more. Fiber diameter is 25 to 40 microns, natural color is white, and there were no field notes in here. Welsh, Welsh mountain sheep from the southern Wales are a bit larger than those grown in the central and northern Welsh mountains. Okay, sturdy sheep, sturdy yarn, that's what you can expect of these breeds. The main difference between them is the amount of kemp in their fleeces. Welsh mountain contains a slender kemp, which has durability without much accompanying harshness. Expect far more abundant Kemp in South Wales mountain fleeces and factor in scratchiness when planning uses for this wool. Both breeds exhibit blocky staples with short tapering tips and a nice, if irregular, crimp in the finer fibers. The fiber mix makes combining, combing and or carding a challenge. Consider teasing apart the low grease locks and spinning them directly. Use a light touch when spinning and expect the Kemp to resist twist. Uh, effects of dyes. Kemp won't show dyed colors well, but other fibers in the mix will yield interesting shade and texture contrast. Best uses sturdy sweaters, mittens, hats, blankets, tapestry drugs. Pay attention to the fiber mix and you can, can make any of these with selected fleeces of these breeds. Okay. So let's take an actual look at the fiber itself and we'll get our ruler out and we will measure a lock and see what we got going for it. So, all right, pull this out. It's not super soft. It's not horrible. Um, yeah, it's, it's about a medium. It's not, not too harsh, not too bad. Okay, we'll just pull out a little bit of lock here. So about that long. So see the ruler says is this one's about five inches. So that's on average for it. So um, let me get my wheel set up and then we'll start spinning this and see how it turns out again i'm probably going to do my short back draft like i usually do with a, um, a chain ply because it's easier i only have one bobbin available to, or two bobbins available to me at the time uh so i can't do like a two ply or anything like that so that's the easiest way for me to do this right now so let me get this set up and we'll get started <music>
Okay, so the yarn has been uh, wet finished, hung up to dry, and here we go. So, we got about 26 yards, roughly 8 wraps per inch, so Aaron weight, about what we've been getting. Uh, yardage is a little bit less because we've been getting in the 30s, this one is kind of low. But it's still nice, it's squishy, it's got a bit of stretch to it, uh, it's uh, kind of prickly though. So I wouldn't use it for anything close to skin, but I would love to have a sweater's quantity of this. I love this color, first of all, this natural uh, dark chocolate, or uh, almost black. Um, I think this would make a beautiful sweater if I had enough of it, but unfortunately, this is all I got, 25 grams, 26 yards, ain't enough to make a sweater. Um, it did spin nicely. It plied very well. I uh, only had one little screw up with the plying where when I was doing the chain ply, it snapped on me. Not a big deal. That was just a little too much tension on the Lazy Kate, I think. Um, but it did uh, spin and ply very well. I would definitely um, purchase more of this if it was available at a decent price. Um, and uh, it was an enjoyable spin. So if you've ever spun Wash Mountain before, please let me know in the comments below. So next week is the last of the international collection. And that's going to be Zwartblus. If I'm pronouncing that correctly, it's from the Netherlands. Um, we did get some of this in one of our Paradise Fibers bags uh, several months ago. Um, I haven't spun it up yet. So um, this one's going to be fun. I love the, the black color on this too. So hopefully it spins up rather nicely. Anyway, so after after this, the Spartless, we start on the English collection. We have 12 different fibers from that. And we finish up the English collection and we go to global and we've got 12 of that. And then maybe we'll do the, um, the plant-based fibers that we have as well. Uh, the only one I might not be able to do is cotton because I still haven't been able to spin cotton yet. <laughs> I've got a charka and I, and I do have, uh, um, the Tockley, um, but I've never been successful in using either one of them yet. It'll take a little bit of practice, but I'll get there eventually, I hope. So anyways, until next time, happy crafting!